my vote on September the 18th this year, as with every decision in everyone's life, is connected to every decision, experience and relationship that has come before. So what follows is a personal history of sorts. Let's begin on the 18th of June in 1979, when I was born to a woman who had left the Isle of Lewis in 1964 at the age of 17 to begin her life's work as a teacher, journeying from Glasgow to Zambia and beyond. She gave birth to me in Adelaide, Australia, and two weeks later, she took me and my older brother to Papua New Guinea to join my father, an Australian of French, Scots and English ancestry. Four years later, my father's work moved us to Jakarta, Indonesia, which would be my main home for the next 14 years. Jakarta, Indonesia, where my family, as most expatriate families do, employed a pembantu, a helper, an additional member of the family a member of staff, a servant, a man called Tarsid, a man who had a family of 12 living 11 or so hours away by train, a man who was available to care for me 24 hours a day, seven days a week, a man whose surname I never knew. Most summers, my mum would take my brother and me to the Isle of Lewis to visit her parents. We would trample across the Barvis Moor climb over the Kalanish stones and the Carloway Broch, race over the Valtos dunes, convinced that Viking ships would land at any moment and take us captive. And at night, we would drive home to Stornoway, where the swings are chained on Sundays, and I would wake up at 4am missing the sound of the mosque call to prayer. As a child, my nightly routine often involved a makeshift Hindu shrine, praying to God and to Allah, crossing myself multiple times, chanting om and blowing kisses to the air above and around me, just in case. And in 1988, my mother, my brother and I spent a year in rural Queensland, where us kids would line up outside the school gates and sing, Australians, all oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free, followed promptly by God save our gracious. A few years later, back at the British International School in Jakarta, I remember a classroom teacher holding a mock election. Which colour do you like? Blue, red or yellow? I'd like to choose green. You can't choose green. But Indonesians can choose green. That's an Islamic party. We're British. We don't have parties like that. You can choose blue, red or yellow. Which colour do you like? I like the colour green. In 1996, my dad took an aid job in East Timor, still then a part of Indonesia, but with an active guerrilla separatist movement. And my brother and I visited him there, driving through its napalmed landscapes. But why did they bomb them? Because they wanted to be independent. So why do they want to be independent again? Well, some people have never wanted to not be independent. And so I suppose they're hoping that this time it will be different. But why? Because Indonesia is diverse. It holds many different peoples with many different languages, beliefs, religions and cultures. Because one single government located in the most populous area cannot make decisions in the best interests of everyone in such a diverse nation. And because the government is corrupt, nepotistic and elitist. So is that why they bombed them? Well, maybe so. Do they hate them? I think they think they love them. Got a funny way of showing it. And in 1997, at almost 18, I left my home in Jakarta, Indonesia, and moved out on my own to London. And in 2001, I campaigned and marched against an illegal war for oil under the guise of weapons of mass destruction. A year later, East Timor voted for independence from Indonesia and my brother went on the first of his many UN contracts there, aiding them on their long journey towards becoming a sustainable country. Why does it take so long 
when are you going to come back to visit? Independence isn't something that just happens overnight. It's a long and complicated process. Is that normal? Yes, it is completely normal. Chill out. And in 2006, I began my continuing relationship with an ever-changing community of people living in Glasgow under the asylum system. People who have become some of my dearest friends. People who have been detained, dawn raided, evicted and made homeless. People who have been deported, who have jumped from windows to avoid deportation. People who have made their homes here, who have fallen in love here and had their children here. People who have been welcomed by their surrounding communities and who have welcomed me into their homes and into their hearts. And in 2007, I moved to Scotland, which is now my home, and which now, in 2014, has the opportunity to vote for independence. And yes, I consider myself a Scottish person voting in this referendum, but I also consider myself Australian and French and English. I am a child of the British Empire formed and moulded by the cultures, religions and languages of Indonesia, East Timor and Papua New Guinea and many other cultures and peoples besides. And I am voting yes. And my yes is not informed by an idea of the nation of Scotland, but instead is informed by every decision and every experience and every relationship that has come before. And so I'm saying yes. I'm saying yes for my mother. For my mother who, as a little Yawasach, arrived at school one term to find that Gaelic was no longer the language of the classroom and that she and her sister and friends would have to catch up quick. Because an independent Scotland could be a step towards greater cultural confidence for all of our minority cultures. I am saying yes for Tarsid, my Pembantu, my helper, who I love and who I miss and who I wish I could say I feel deeply ashamed of the inequality in our relationship. And Scotland has its own colonial guilt and shame. And the best way to begin to come to terms with that is by dismantling the institution of empire. I am saying yes for the land I played on during my summer holidays in Lewis, where the wind whipped my hair and the sea crashed against the shore. Because in an independent Scotland, we have more chance of green and climate aware policies being at the heart of government than we do under Westminster. I am saying yes for the wee girl praying to everyone to whom the idea of multi, multiple cultures living together seemed entirely normal, because an independent Scotland could be internationalist, outward-looking, multicultural, diverse and welcoming of difference. I'm saying yes for the little kids who wondered why they had to sing God Save the Queen. I am saying yes because there are other options than blue, red or yellow. Yes for the young activist who marched with a million shouting not in my name. Yes, for the millions and millions of Iraqis, Iranians, Afghanis, the list goes on, who have been killed in my name. Yes, to a more peaceable foreign policy. And yes, yes, to an end to Trident. Not least of all, because Trident is the weapon of mass destruction that is of most danger to me, because it is kept within an hour's drive of the city I live in, the city of Glasgow, which is the largest city in Scotland. Yes, for East Timor. Yes, for every other country that has never been as fortunate as Scotland is to have the opportunity to gain independence by peaceable means. Yes, for my brothers and sisters who have been deported, who thought they were coming to a land where human rights were revered, where refuge would be offered and humanity respected. Because as much as I might wish it were not so, we live in a world of borders 
and few new border control systems could be more brutal and more inhumane than the current system enforced by the United Kingdom Border Agency. And so I am saying yes to more open borders and yes to close Dungaval. Yes, for the person I will continue to be, who still has a hope for a better, more equal, more humane and more sustainable Scotland and world. Yes, for the children I will hopefully have one day soon, who the democracy of an independent Scotland could guarantee continued access to free healthcare and education. And yes, yes, I know that my yes will not by itself revert the climate crisis. It will not by itself rescue us from capitalism. It will not by itself rid Scotland of racism and bigotry, but it might, it just might, be one step in the long journey towards a Scotland with an internationalist outlook, somewhere welcoming of multiculturalism and diversity, somewhere at peace, somewhere defined by hope, somewhere where my children can continue to build a fairer, more equal and sustainable world for their children and their children and their children, and their children, and theirs, and theirs, and theirs, and theirs. And theirs.